The United States of America were working here with the chart 4th of July 1776 at an hour and minute where the founding fathers signed the papers. Most astrologers use that chart. It is Sagittarius rising and that is the United States. It's open to the world. Sagittarius rising would be space travel, space exploration, <coughs> NASA programs. In the chart of the United States, which is almost 245 years old, we see that we're going through the Pluto return. So there are very few entities alive on this planet who are going through a Pluto return, which is 240, 245 years. In the chart of the United States, since it is Sagittarius rising, we see then Gemini descending. And within two signs, Gemini and Cancer, we see practically all of the inner and outer planet lined up. For instance, uh, Mars and Uranus in Gemini descending seventh house. So you look at this chart over the years, I've had to study this like 20 years. And you look at the events, what's going on, because you cannot say until you see the event. You begin to realize that the United States chart has a lot of potential allies as well as enemies, you know how the seventh house works. And in Gemini, it multiplies up. And so you begin to see in the history, the pattern. And this pattern shows in the astrology, that's the point. You also see Pluto in the second house of resources, you're beginning to consider who is Pluto in that chart. Is it the Federal Reserve? You can, by the way, put the Federal Reserve chart over the United States chart and you get an almost mirror effect. And you see <coughs> that the nation is potentially indebted for a very long time. If we take now the Russian chart, the youngest chart that we can look at, it's about 27 years old now. It's going to go through its first Saturn return in two years, in 2020. All charts, by the way, I'm discussing point to 2020. That's why I'm bringing them in now. And the Russian chart, that's the moment on Christmas Day, 1991, in the evening, with the sun way below the horizon because it's Christmas Day. And the Russian chart shows a lot of Capricorn, Aquarius, Scorpio. This is a very resilient, super resourceful chart. And in which you could see that in the first eight, nine years of its existence, that chart was under threat several times. Those were the years of Yeltsin. And only in 2000, 99, 2000, you see the chart of Russia veer towards its actual potential, which has an advantage by 2020. And one can say that the Western world will be dealing, astrologically speaking, with what Russia was faced in 1991 when it was formed. One sees in the Russian chart, for instance, the resources that could be technological and could be Arctic, land. They are looking at an Aquarian world, at a whole new existence of their society, and that's also written in the Russian chart. And now if you want to take quickly the Israeli chart that has just turned 70 years old, that was May 14, 1948, with the history of how it came about. Nevertheless, one can see this is typically Taurus and a lot of Leo in the chart, high up in the sky, and Pluto in Leo. That was the time of the nuclear programs. Pluto rules nuclear energy. And in Leo, and with the Taurus sign, you get the feeling of a very territorial chart, a chart that has to defend itself, and it can turn pretty offensive to defend itself. So a person born on that day would also have that chart. That would also be a person that would be rather territorial and aware of having to look after its people and all the history they're going through and must work through. So again, we see these potentials. And then if we want to take quickly a chart from China, we're using the Mao chart. One sees really in the chart, this is the manager of future world resource systems. It's a chart that is serviceable that sees its role, maybe even as being a teacher to at least its own society. And if you remember what Shikasta was about with Doris Lessing, she sees that China one day will actually have to live up to this potential that is written in the chart. Again, all these are oscillating probabilities. A lot of what we're discussing is um, 
speculative, but this is an art. Astrology is an art. In timeless teachings, <coughs> we see Krishnamurti, I will show you his notebook later. We can even see 500 years before Machiavelli, who was a philosopher, a political philosopher, also taught about how to manage things. He was very well aware that the Catholic Church was a problem for Italy at that time, 500 years ago, he knew this. We looked at Bruce Lee, who was a student of Krishnamurti, and who summed everything up by saying, empty your mind and be like water, my friend. So as we're going through these Capricorn planets with all these charts, we see a transit that really does what is useful or what is of use. Capricorn is about what it can use. And so 2020 to 24, these next few years, are going to see resolution of societies, their systems, their rules of law, the democracies as well are under review. We're seeing all these subjects explained in astrology. And we have some sources who openly talk. For instance, in 2012, Ivanov, who was then chief of staff or hired to Putin, he held a private type interview with a group of diplomats and journalists. And he talked for a little while in the garden. He was sitting there looking like Krishnamurti under a tree. It was very funny. And he explained that they had, from Moscow, tried for 10, 12 years to create a useful dialogue and alliances and business together with the Western Europeans, with all of the Europeans. And he said in 2012, he said, this is not working and we're going to have to turn towards the East and review all of our alliances. When he said that in 2012, we knew then this is not looking good for Europe. If he says that in this form, he's pointing also at the astrology. So what we're seeing going on here are karmic returns of 250 years, 60, 70 years, and in the case of Russia now, only 30 years. So in the next subject, we're going into what is really the crisis of civics in 2020.